All right, number one is going to be learning target number five. So give yourself a check or next if you get this one correct. Now, we know that whenever it says simplify, no, there is no work that's required on this one. But if I would have been you and I wanted to make sure that I'm going to do my best, I probably would have went ahead and written the, written the thing out on my paper. I would have probably done this, plus 9D, plus 6, plus 5D. Then I can look at it. Now I can just be a little more organized. I, I said you were allowed to use highlighters if you wanted to, and you can on Thursday as well. And if you wrote that out, you would actually be able to kind of circle or highlight your um, like terms. So, like, for instance, I showed you this on a video. But one way, if you don't have a highlighter, is you can, you can always just circle that, put shapes around them. And then with the other ones that are like, you could do like maybe rectangles or something like that. Do rectangles like that. Okay? So um, now we know that anything that has, that's a term that has the same variable, they're going to have to be like each other, correct? So we know we have 20 dogs and we have 9 dogs. We put those together. How many dogs do we have? 29 dogs, and then we see, oh, wait a minute, I have five more dogs over here, so how many dogs do I have? So I actually have 34 dogs. Obviously, it's addition. Now my constants, are they always going to be like each other? Constants? Yes. Constants are always going to be like numeric terms. Um, that's going to be 34D plus 18. 34D plus 18. So that's where you got this. So no... There wasn't any work required there, but in my experience, it's just, why not just quickly show, write it out just to make sure you're doing your best. That's it. Clayton, you with me? Yeah. Okay. Factoring the expression. We know that on number two, this is going to be learning target number seven. No, it's not. It's learning target number six. Sorry. Learning target number six. Okay. Now, when we're factoring, that's when we are fact. We're finding a factor. We're, we're making it look like this. Now, what number is always going to go here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to factor. Now, what number is always going to go right here in this spot right here? Yep. The GCF, the greatest common factor. That is the number that's always going to go there. Now. I don't know whether or not you guys can do this. You might have a hard time doing this one mentally because because they're just it's kind of a weird combination, 18 and 45. What could you do if you're not sure how exactly to figure out what the GCF of 18 and 45 is? Yes? You could do your trees and actually find the greatest common factor. So we go up, we do 18, okay, that's 3 and 6, which is 2 and 3. We do 45, which we know is 5 and 9, and 3 and 3. Okay, then we'll stack those up. 2 times 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 times 5. You can easily see they have a 3 in common and a 3 in common. So what does that mean the GCF is? It is 9. Okay, now we got that figured out. Now we just have to kind of work backwards. 9 times what? Remember, we're going to use the distributive property. So 9 times what here? would get me back to 18R. What would that be? Yeah? Times 2R. 2R is what it would be. All right. So we know that 9 times 2R would be the only way to get me back to 18R. And that's just think about it like this. 9 times 2 times R. I can go ahead and do that. And then it's 18 times R, which we know we would write as 18R, right? Now, what would I multiply 9 by that would give me back to 45? 5, 5. So I think that was a multiple choice, but regardless, that was the correct answer there. That's the only way. If you're somebody that used 3 out front, that wouldn't be using the GCF. Okay? All right. Let's go on to number 3. Now, here was one, in my opinion, that I didn't tell you needed work, but... I would say for the majority of you that got it correct, I can almost guarantee you showed work. Yep. And because it just it's just hard to do this mentally. I mean, I would have a hard time doing this mentally. I mean, I would have to kind of do it in steps. And I just say, why not just make it easy on yourself? It takes an extra 30 seconds 
to expand this on the back table right there. Oh, right there. There you go. No, yeah, there you go. Whoop. Right there. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I would just go ahead and expand this, distribute these numbers through, and get a new expression. Because that's the first step to simplifying it, right? So I'm going to expand it. What is 3 times 2m? 6m. What is 3 times 4? 12. Plus, what is 2 times 1m? 2m. And then 2 times 5 is 10, right? Yep. So now, here we have the same situation as we had on number 1 now, right? This is exactly the situation that we, that we started with. So now, we can, use, we can use different colors. We could have used highlighters. We could have used shapes around these things. Regardless, I see that I have six monkeys. I have two monkeys. Can I put those monkeys together? It's going to give me eight monkeys, right? Now I see that I have 12 constants, and I have 10 constants, and that's going to give me 22. Everybody see that? Go to that? Okay. That's learning target number uh, five. Okay. So, write, the, write an expression. This is learning target number one. Okay? Write an expression of the, for the following statement. Now, we've done a, a million of these. I, I mean, we've done, I've tried to hit on these almost daily since we started this chapter, since this was the first target. Write an expression for the following statement. Add. Okay? Put a little plus sign under there. The quotient. Put a little division sign under there. Okay? And then I like to do this and break it down. And I like to say, okay, that is something. That's the quotient of g and 5. Now, we don't use this particular sign anymore, do we? We write all our division problems as fractions. So that is going to be g over 5 plus 8. Is there any other answer I would accept here? Yes. Layton? 8 plus g over 5. I would accept 8 plus g over 5. I still have some people, as they're bringing me their review sheet 21 this week, and there's a question like this one. I still have some of you that are reading that and making that 5 over G. Is that correct? No. If it says the quotient of, it has to remain in that order. So I would accept either one of these. The quotient of G and 5 is G divided by 5. And then if you're adding 8 before or after, it doesn't matter. Because PEMDAS says you're going to do this first anyway. Everybody got that? Yep. All right. Number 5 is learning target number 1. Okay, Julio completed a total of nine math problems for tonight's homework before dinner. Notice that word total. What's another word we like to use in, in place of total? Whole, oh, yes. We talk about whole, part plus part equals whole, whole minus part equals part. We talk about that a lot, right? So when I read total there, I automatically thought of the word whole. He, okay, that was, he completed a total of nine math problems for tonight's homework before dinner, and he completed P problems after dinner. Okay, so that means he completed nine of them before, and he completed some more, just keep it, and he completed some more after dinner, right? Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Write an expression to determine the total number of problems that he completed. So what are we thinking here? What are we thinking? Would this be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Yes. This is going to be addition. Now, it's kind of weird because we use the word total up there, but it does. it's not like a total total, it meaning it's not the total for the whole night. That was just the total before dinner. So actually, that's just a part. It's kind of a weird question, but you got to think of it like that. So we know that we're going to be doing the, the number he did before, the amount he did before, <clears throat> plus the amount that he did after, and there's your expression. 9 plus P. Is there any other answer I would accept here? Yeah. I would also accept P plus 9. Because of what property? Commutative. The commutative property of addition. You can reverse the order and it's fine. Okay, number 6, also learning target number 1. A fence has a total of 875 planks. I'm going to go ahead and underline that. Raymond paints T planks each day. Write an expression for how many days it will take Raymond to finish painting the fence. Now, one way that you can go about these, and I should have showed you this on number five, if you're ever a little bit confused, 
you could say, let's just say that Julio up here would have completed 10 problems after dinner. How many problems did he complete all in all? 19. So there. <clears throat> so that proves that we're doing the before plus the after to give our total. Well, if I put five in here for T, how would I figure out how many days he's going to be working on this? What operation am I going to do here? Yep. I'm going to be dividing because it gives me the whole. This is truly the whole. So you know it's you know it's either subtraction or um, a division, right? So when he paints this many each day, we wouldn't just subtract 875 minus 5. That doesn't make any sense, does it? We've got to do division. 875 divided by 5, right? So that is going to be the expression 875 divided by t. Will I accept this? Here, let me let me scoot this down so we can see it. Will I accept this? Whoops. Sorry. That's supposed to be a T right there. Will I accept that? No, that's not how we show division with expressions. We don't use that division sign anymore. That one. Okay, so we the only one that's gonna be accepted here is eight hundred and seventy five over T. Now, is it okay if you have T over eight seven five? No, that's not the same thing. You have to do the whole divided by the part, which is going to give us the other part, which is the amount of days he's going to spend painting his fence. Okay, evaluating now, evaluating. Okay, what is the first step of evaluating an, an expression? What is the first, Kyle, what are you on right now? Really? On what? Okay, so what's the first step to evaluating an algebraic expression? Yep. What? Well, it's already written right here. But yeah, you would have. But what's the first step, guys? Yep. Turn. You might want to write this. The algebraic expression into a numeric expression. That is step number one, always. Turn the algebraic into a numeric. If you do not do that, it will be wrong. I want to make sure everybody heard me. I'm going to say it again. If you do not do that, it will be wrong on the summative. Okay, I didn't go through everybody's formative sheets except for the people that potentially tested it out. So if you know you can look at yours right now and you went ahead and just said, oh yeah, 2 times 8, that's 16 plus 14. If that was your first step, that's going to be wrong on the summative. Wrong. Understood? Yep. The first step is to turn the algebraic into a numeric. So what do I mean by that? That means that I'm going to do 2 times 8 plus 14. Now, I'm not going to take points off, but you should be writing PEMDAS. Okay? As a good reminder, notice how I put those arrows on there every single time. Now, are there any parentheses? Are there any exponents? Is there any multiplication or division? So that's going to be 16. Bring down what I haven't used. 16 plus 14 is going to give me 30. Did I get my tornado? Did I complete PEMDAS? Yes, I did. That's the work that should be happening. That's what you should have on your scrap sheet on number 7. If you don't, I'm not going to change your grade and mark and lower your grade, but on the summative it will be incorrect. Okay? All right, number... Uh, Number eight here, by the way, these are all learning target number uh, three, by the way. Okay, what's the first thing you should have done on number eight? What's the first thing that you should have done, JT? Uh, change the K. Nope, the you're, you're forgetting one little step, yep. Parentheses around 4K. Now we're going to turn that algebraic into a numeric. So 4 times 16, all of that divided by 8. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and write PEMDAS because it's a good habit to get into. Okay. Now obviously I'm going to do parentheses first. That's going to give me 64 over 8 and then 10 minus that. Am I done with parentheses? Are there any exponents? Is there any multiplication or division? 
Yes, right there. 64 divided by 8 is 8. 10 minus 8 is going to give me? Negative 2. Negative 2. Oh, wait, no, two. Just 2. Did I get my tornado here? Do I have my tornado? Once again, if you don't have yours exactly like that, it might be correct now. It will be incorrect on the summative. I'm making that very clear for everybody. What did I do? I said I forgot to do oh. minus 10 with that. Okay. Taylor, okay. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now number nine, also learning target number three. Also learning target three. Once again, I'm going to turn that algebraic into a numeric first and foremost. Nine parenthesis, two plus five minus three. Now, could I have went ahead and distributed this first? Could I have made this 9x plus 45 minus 3? Could I do that? And then plug in x? Sure you could. That's fine. Either way, if you did it that way, that's fine. I didn't on this one. I'm going to go ahead and write PEMDAS again. Okay. We do parentheses first. That's going to be 7. What's it mean when a number's touching up a, a parentheses? Multiply. Am I done with parentheses? Are there any exponents? Is there any multiplication or division? 63, bring down minus 3, and then I end up getting 60. Do I get my, did I get my tornado? Yeah. All right. Number 10, this is also learning target number 1. Three bricks of B centimeters are laid down in a row. Sometimes I like to, I like to draw a little picture here. Three bricks of B centimeters are laid down in a row. What is the total length of the three bricks? So if you think about it, wouldn't that be B right there? Wouldn't that be B right there? Yep. Wouldn't that be B right there? Yep. So what's it going to be? How are we going to show this as an expression? We are going to show it as 3B. Now some people might say, well, wait, Mr. Garrison, why isn't it B plus B plus B? Well, it is. But shouldn't you simplify that? Yes. Is, aren't all those like terms? Which would give you 3B. Will I accept B3? No. no, you don't write it that way. Would I accept 3 dot B? No, we don't write it that way. You write it with the coefficient in front of the variable. Right, everybody? Right. All right. Let's go down to number, number um, 11 here. A pentagon. Wait, well, this is... That was learning target one up there, number 10. Okay. Okay, this one here is going to be learning target number five. Okay. A pentagon has side lengths as shown. We want to find the perimeter. Now, how do we find perimeter again? Add all sides. That's what perimeter is. It's the total distance around an object. That's what perimeter is. So we know it's going to be 3 plus 3 plus x plus x plus x. Now do we need to simplify that? Of course we do. Everything's got to be in the simplest terms. So we have 3 and 3. Those are constants, right? Right? Then we have x, x, and x. We can combine those. Wouldn't we end up having 3x plus 3? Or 3 plus 3x? Either one of those is correct, right? Well, wouldn't it be 6? Yeah. I'm sorry. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. Sorry. Oh. Well, anyway. I. It is. It's It's 3x plus 6. My bad. Sorry. Or 6, or six plus 3x. Everybody got that? Okay. Let's go down here. Number 12. Also learning target number 5 here. All these simplifying ones are 5. Okay. This one's going to be um, number 6. This one will be number 6. Okay. Again, same deal here. We have 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G. And then we have the constant 24 and 13. No, you didn't have to show work, but in my opinion, I would probably write it out and use a highlighter just to make sure you're getting them correct. You're going to end up getting 4G plus 37 or 37 plus 4G. Okay. 13, factoring the expression. I'm sorry, expanding, not a factoring. Expanding means distributing. Let's all write that somewhere. Expanding equals distributing. Let's all know that. Expanding equals distributing. Okay? All right. So when you do that, 9 times 4z is going to give me 36z. Does the minus remain there? Does the subtraction sign stay? Or does it become addition? Stays. Then we got to expand to the other one. That's going to give us 45. The big mistake, I'll show you the two mistakes that people do for questions like this. 
These are the wrongs. Maybe you could write these and try to learn from others' mistake. The first mistake is a lot of people do this, 36z minus 5. They don't distribute to both numbers. They just stop after the first term. Okay. The other mistake that I see that's incorrect is I see people doing 36z plus 45. They turn it to an addition, also incorrect. Everybody got that? Yep. Okay, number 14. Now, we've got a factor. Now, anytime you're factoring, you know it's going to become something that looks like this. Now, once again, if you don't know what the GCF of 16 and 40 is, could you go over and do your trees? Huh? Sure you could. I'm going to tell you that it's 8. Now, 8 times what would get me back to 16y? 2y. 8 times what would get me back to 40? There we go. And there's your answer. Yeah. Okay. Have we got it? Yep. Okay. Number 15. i got to kind of look at the answers here on this one. i got to... Actually, what were the answers you wanted to give me the answers? What was A? Fifth, wait. A7 plus 9G and 9G plus 27. Wait, and B? Three. What was letter A? Oh, B and B. Seven plus seven. Okay, I just want to know all the answers here. Oh. Plus. What was A? 27 plus G. 27 plus G. Okay, B? B7 plus 9G. Okay, so obviously on this one, you're going to need to distribute it, okay, expand it, and when we do that, we end up getting 27 plus 9G, okay, obviously the mistake here for A and C that they're trying to get you to see is that, okay, you can see if it's, if it's 27 plus G, they would only have distributed to that first term, right, right, yeah. okay, so obviously that would be eliminated, that would be eliminated, the only two here are these, and the reason they're both answers is because of the commutative property of addition. Yes? It's all wrong. Okay. Number 16. No. It's number, it's six. Okay. Roberto has been playing piano six times as many years as his brother Felix has. Use F to represent Felix. So now here we got letter A. Write an algebraic expression. Well, it says it right there. It's 6 times F, right? Yes. 6F. We, that's the only way I would accept it. I would not accept 6 dot F. I would not accept F6. F I would not accept 6XF. None of those would be accepted. And it says it right there. 6 times as many. That gives it away. JT, learning target number 1. And then this would technically be learning target 3. Okay, letter B here. If Felix has been playing piano for three years, how many years has he been playing? Well, realistically, you should do this. You didn't have to do this, but you should have re written the expression, and then you should have turned that algebraic into a um, numeric, and then you should have followed PEMDAS to get 18 years. But I know that a lot of you did that one mentally, and that's perfectly fine on that one. Okay? Okay, here we go, number 17. This is learning target number 7 now. Okay, these next couple are going to be 7. Okay, uh, state whether the expressions are equivalent. And I've told you before, you technically could plug in an S, like a 5 for S, but that's just more time consuming. Um, let's just go ahead and simplify it by combining like terms. If I have 7 sharks and 5 sharks, how many sharks do I have? 9. I have 9 sharks plus 3, right? Over here, I have two sharks and five sharks. How many sharks do I have? Seven. Seven sharks. Obviously, are these the same thing? No chance. This is false. Okay. They are absolutely not equivalent. You have a different number of sharks. Can't be equivalent. Okay. Here, I have four sharks and uh, four sharks. That's going to give me eight sharks. Okay. And then here, this is kind of a weird one because technically, you guys would tell me, well, Mr. Garrison, aren't we breaking PEMDAS by doing division before multiplication? Well, this is a little bit different. you got to think about it like this. you got to say, well, if I had 16 sharks, 
Sharks, can I divide them into two groups? Sure. Okay, so just think about it like that. It's a little weird, but that's, you're just, you're allowed to. So then you would have eight sharks and eight sharks. Are those equal? Yeah, that one would be absolutely true. Uh, that one got me because I thought you did the multiply yeah. the variable before you divide it. It's kind of weird, I know. But you're allowed to in that case. Yes? Uh, can you give us an example of like, what case in your math? All right, so um, those are those. That's false and true. We're going to target sevens. Okay, let's go down to number 19. Okay, now number 19 is a little more time consuming. This is going to be learning target number three. Okay, what is the first thing that you should have done when you were doing this question? Yep, should have put parentheses around. Remember, any, any numerator or denominator that's an expression, you need to simplify that first. Okay, so now what do I do? What's my next step now? What's the very next thing I should be doing on this? Just anytime you see that word right there. What's the first thing you should do, at, unless you have to put parentheses? Come on, guys. I wrote it earlier. Yep. Turn it into a numeric. So I'm going to rewrite this as 12 minus 3. All of that divided by 9 plus 4 times 3 plus 3. All of that divided by 3. So we write PEMDAS, right, guys? Yep. But don't I have a little mini PEMDAS inside of these? Okay, so I'm going to do these parentheses first. That's going to be 12 minus 3 is 9 divided by 9. Am I allowed to do any more steps than that? Okay, if you don't do it like this on the summative, guys, it will be wrong. Okay, this is how I want it done. You may want to write this so you have it, because otherwise, incorrect. So now I have this little mini PEMDAS in here, right? Do I do multiplication or adding first? Multiplication. Do I leave the parentheses on it? Yes. yes, I do. Bring down everything. Okay, now I'm going to finish the parentheses. Okay. Am I done with the parentheses? Yes. Are there any exponents? Is there any multiplication or division? Yes. Yes, I'm going to do that first. That's going to be 1 plus 15 over 3. Then I'm going to finish here and get 5. So I'd end up having 1 plus 5, which gives me 6. Did I get my tornado? Yes, I did. <clears throat> That's the way it's done. One step at a time. The answer was six. Okay? All right. Let's go to number 20. It's going to be learning target number two. Okay, so you should write PEMDAS every single time. Okay? Um, when I go inside parentheses, is there a little mini PEMDAS? Hello? So am I going to add or am I going to do exponents first? Exponents. Exponents. Do I leave the do I leave the parentheses on there? Yes. Now I'm ready to finish the parentheses. That's going to give me 66. 5 times 66 plus 3. I'm finally done with parentheses. Are there any exponents? No. What's 5 times 66? Is it 330? 330, yeah. 330, and then 330 plus 3 would give me 333. And there's my tornado. Everybody got it? Yeah. Okay. All right, 21. The product of 7 and P. I think, I think I've made myself clear. Product means multiply. The only way you can write it is 7P. It's the only thing that's accepted. P7, 7.7, 7 .7, P.7, 7 uh, with parentheses like that. All, they all mean multiplication, but none of them will be accepted. This is the only one. This is learning target number one. Okay, this is learning target number two here. Um, now this one, you can see we had brackets on there. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit bigger. Now, brackets are just fancy parentheses. JT, come on. Parentheses, brackets are just fancy parentheses, okay, everybody? So when I see these brackets right here, when I go inside of there, remember, that's where we have our little mini PEMDAS, right? So when I go inside of parentheses, I look for more parentheses. Are there any more? Yes. Yes, I've got to take care of that. That's going to be 10. And then 22 minus. Can I, do I need to bring down these parentheses? What about the brackets? Yes. Yes. Okay, and then that's going to be 12. And then we got 2 times 12 is? 
24. Did I get my tornado? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, next one down here. This is also learning target number one. Write an algebraic expression for the following statement. The quotient of R and 2. Quotient means division. There's only one way I'm going to accept it. R over 2. If you're still somebody that's putting 2 over R, you need to figure it out. When it says the quotient of, in this case, R and 2, you leave it as R divided by 2. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay. Number 24, also learning target number 1. Okay. So, 4 fewer than P. Obviously, the confusion here is whether or not it's 4 minus P or whether it's P minus 4. What's going to be the correct answer here? It's going to be this one because you're talking about 4 fewer than that. Less than that. 4 less than 4 fewer. So it's going to be this subtracting 4. Everybody got that? Would it have to be switched around for 4 to be first? So P fewer than 4? If it was, yeah, if it was P fewer than 4, then it would be 4 minus P. Okay. Number 25, also learning target number 1. We have a lot of those, I know. It's going to build in the next, chap in the next chapter. Okay, write an algebraic expression for the following statement. Subtract, and then this is where I like to use brackets, the product of E and 4 from 15. So hopefully you're all realizing that the product of E and 4 has to be written as 4E, right? Not E4, not 4.E, not E.4, not E star 4. It's got to be 4E. Now we know it's subtraction, so what it comes down to is whether or not it is 4E minus 15 or 15 minus 4E. Now, are those two expressions the same? No. They are not the same. So which one is right? Which one is the correct one? This one is the correct one. And what reasoning? Why? Why is that? What's the reason behind that? Yep. Whenever you see the word from, we know that whatever follows the from is always going to be the whole. And we know that subtraction problems are always whole minus part. Right? Okay. Number 26 is learning target number 6. Again, you're expanding. We've done 100 of these. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 9 is 36. 4x plus 36. Number 27, simplifying. Learning target number 5. Okay, so here we go. I have two z's. I have one z. When I put those together, I would have three z's. When I have nine constants and three constants, I put those together, I'm going to have 12 constants. So that's going to be 3z plus 12. Everybody got it? Cool. All right. 28. You had to identify the terms, the like terms, the constants, and the coefficients. Now, I know yours was matching, but regardless... What are my terms here? 3x, 5x, 3x, 5x, 4x, and 8. Okay, what, give me a, one group of like terms. Give me one group of like terms, Kylie. 3, 4, No. That's one group, and then also 5 and 8 are constants, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, constants. What are my constants now? 5 and 8, those are just the numeric terms. And the coefficients is the one that everybody misses. Those are going to be just the number part of the variable term. So 3, 1, and 8. Oh, I'm sorry, 4. Just making sure everybody's paying attention. 3, 1, and 4, and there you go. And then you didn't have to simplify it, did you? No. Okay. All right, same thing here. If I were listing out the terms, they would be 3x, 5, X, 4, is that the same question? No. Oh, oh, okay, I got it. So now on this one, this is learning, this was learning target number 4, by the way. <clears throat> this is learning target number 5. So now we got to simplify it. So we got 3Xs, we have 1X, and we have 4X. You put all those Xs together, you're going to have 8X. And then you have the constant 5 and the constant 8, 8X plus 13. Yep. Number 4. No. Okay, number 30. Another one just like that. So we'll identify the terms. 
I'll just tell you the terms are M, 7, 5M, 4M, 8, and 4. It's just where the addition signs are. Imagine there's commas, right, guys? I've told you that. Now, if we're identifying the like terms, I won't list them out. I'm just going to circle them. I'm going to do different colors. So I see that is like. Do you think that's like it? Do you think that's like it? Is there anything else like the M's? Okay, what about the constants? Are they like? Mm -hmm. So there's my like terms. I just showed them with colors. What are my constants here? Yep. Okay, so 7, 8, and 4. And then finally, my coefficients are? What are my coefficients, uh, Nate? 1, 5, and 4. Remember, that's just the number in front of the variable term. Okay? Now we're going to simplify by combining like terms. Um, I'll go ahead and circle these like I have them up there. So I have one monkey, I have five monkeys, and four monkeys. When I put them together, how many monkeys do I have? I have ten monkeys. I have seven constants. I have eight and four. When I put those together, I get 19. 10m plus 19. Okay? Larry target number... Um, five. This is four. You guys could look at the previous one. Same. Just read it once in a while. Okay. <coughs> Number 32. <coughs> Number 32. We are going to, uh, are we going to solve or simplify <coughs> expressions, guys? We are going to simplify. We are going to use this word right here, solve, in chapter 8 when we are solving equations. We have not done anything with equations yet, have we? Besides review sheets a couple times? Have we done anything with equations? No. You solve equations. You either simplify or you evaluate expressions. Everybody got that? Okay, and then finally, number 33. Where are we at here? What number was there? 32 was not really a target. Okay, so here we go. So uh, these, I mean, they're pretty, I mean, if you did your Kahoot, or not the Kahoot, but if you do the, uh, the Quizlet, you'll have these down because I put them, I copy and paste them straight from here to there. So they're going to be on the summative. You all heard it first. This exact question's on the summative. All I did was copy it over to the summative. So it's there. Use it. So parts of an expression that are added together, those are your terms. 2x plus 3 plus 4x, term, term, term. Aren't they all added together? Okay, so that's that one. Evaluating. That's when we're going to substitute. Another word for substitute you might hear me saying is plug in, right? If I said x plus 3 and I said when x equals 2, am I not just substituting that 2 in for x and then simplifying? Hold on. Right? Right? Okay. A numerical expression is an, an expression that consists of only numbers and operations. Nothing's changed there. I've been giving you that same definition the whole time. Numeric means number, expression, numbers and operations. A coefficient is the number part of a term. And I gave you the example there. A word that I want to add in here, a number part of a variable term is what it should say. You might want to write that somewhere. The number part of a variable term is the coefficient. A number with no variable, just a numeric term, that's a constant. Okay, terms that have identical variable parts or, or are just numeric terms, those are your like terms. Okay, and then an expression that consists of numbers, but the big key is right there, variables and operations. That's going to be your variable expression. Okay, uh, well, again, it kind of is just a mixture. I mean, I guess if you're going to call it anything, it would be learning target 4. But there's more than just learning target. I mean, it's learning target. It's all of them, kind of. Okay?